as you guys know, we record each of these sessions and we would love for you to subscribe to the ESPC YouTube channel. For the YouTube, cha YouTube channel, we have both this meeting and also all the Compass for Caregiver meetings. So we have one of those tonight at seven to eight o'clock. The sessions could be about uh, in-home care versus home health care itself. So please, if you can join us for that, but if not, go back out to the ESPC YouTube channel and you can catch up on all the videos since last year here. Um, so basic housekeeping items here. So please, everybody, this is your opportunity to put your word out there, share your information in the chat channel, your contact information, so everybody can jump into that. And also at the end of it, you have the ability to, within chat, save all the chats. So you don't have to scribble all those phone numbers down. So in case you wonder why I'm presenting today, the the ESBC 2021 elections have been finalized here, and we do thank everybody who is a member for casting your vote here itself. And my plan was here to thank sincerely our former president of all the phenomenal work that she has done with the ESBC, serving two terms. She took us uh, her vision, her compassion, and she took us through COVID. And uh, she's been quite a leader for us and also Big shoes for me to fill, but as we all know, Christina is not going anywhere and we can always knock on Christina's door for insight and uh, assistance and help with that. But the next thing I wanna do is for the 2021-2022 Board of Directors here, I would like to kind of go through all the folks who are with us here itself. So let's start with our member at large here. It's Katrina Wolf Age Well Fitness here. Katrina, can you wave your hand here? Thank you very much. There we go. Uh, the Elder Expo Committee is uh, held up by Bonnie Elliott. I'm not sure we have Bonnie this morning here, but uh, she's with Care Patrol. Uh, public Relations, new person, Terry. So Terry Muir is with Healthy Home Living Solutions. She is not with us today because she is in Florida on her vacation, but I've already had several conversations with Terry. Terry has some very great ideas of what we could do with Facebook and what we could do with public relations going forward here. So stay tuned with that. Uh, governance, finance, of course, Eileen with Ride at Home here. She's been phenomenal with the ESPC here. She always finds us great folks to actually present today as we have with Mindy today. So we look forward to that. Uh, treasurer, Angela Martin. Angela, wave your hand with Shepherd staff here. So she's been... Uh, with the ESBC on and off here, and she is our fantastic uh, treasurer for now. The secretary, I'm not sure if he's on, is David Watts. He's actually taken my former position. So I had a conversation with him the other day to start handing over the reins, the baton to him. And I'm also gonna meet with him on Friday to give him the, uh, the sacred, as we know, the ESBC secretary book binder here to pass the baton here, so. We're looking forward to that. And of course, our vice president is Lisa Flannery with the new web called Bridgie Life. Is that correct? All right, I got it right here. So, and of course, um, myself, Troy Dirty with uh, Assisting Hands Home Care uh, as the new president. So we have a lot of great folks that have been with the ESPC and we also have some new blood within the ESPC. And I'm really looking forward to some ideas as to what we have done with the ESPC, what has Christina and the gang have done in the past year, but I'm starting to reach out to all the individual members. If I haven't reached out to you yet, believe me, I'm going to independently here. Get your ideas, get your thoughts as to what we have done, where we could take the ESPC. Also, I know many of us are in other organizations in Carroll County and Howard County and Washington County. And what are some of the things that we can learn from that to actually make the ESPC a better organization than it is right now? Also with that is my plan is to reach out to you, the audience, the members and the guests uh, through some surveys as to what would you, you like to see in the ESBC, what we could potentially accomplish in the next year. Um, questions from anybody? You guys are very quiet all of a sudden. <laughs> all right. So with that, Eileen, if I can, can I turn this over to you then to introduce our guest? Oh, there's Bonnie. Good morning, Bonnie. We just introduced you to the board of directors here. She must be still jumping in. Good morning, Bonnie. Good morning. 
Can we just went me? through who's on the board. Welcome. Thanks. Sorry about that. I just emailed you. My PC was freaking out, so I had to jump to my iPad. Oh, no problem at all. So Eileen, would you take over the reins here and introduce our guest today? Yes, I'm happy to. Thanks, Troy. Hi, everybody. So we are so excited to have Melinda Lohman Hines, Mindy, who is the caregiver um, program coordinator for, for the pro caregiver support program at the Frederick County Senior Services Division. Um, many of you don't know, some of you probably do, that Mindy job shares with Mary Collins. So it's it's a dynamic duo. We are so blessed to have the two of them and they do this and so much more. So thank you, Mindy. Thanks for having me. Um, so Eileen asked me to come and talk to you all today. Um, I'm not always able to make the meetings, but I have attended in the past and you guys all do a great job. So a lot of you I know, some of you I don't. Um, so she asked me to share news and updates, but I thought first I would just share a little bit about um, the program Mary and I work with in case you aren't familiar with it. Um, and if you are, it'll just be a refresher for you. Um, so my background is in sociology and I have a degree also in human services with a focus on gerontology and thanatology. Um, I've been with the senior services division, formerly Department of Aging for um, 20 years now, and Mary and I have been job sharing for 14. So it's been really wonderful. Um, and she's great to work with, and I know a lot of you know her. So um, we coordinate the caregiver support program. It's always evolving. And this program started um, back in 2001. There were um, amendments to the Older American Americans Act. And one of them was to um, have a national family caregiver support program. So this is a national program. Um, every state, every county has a family caregiver support program. And what people do with that can vary based on how much funding they have for their county. So um, if you have people that you're working with that are long distance caregivers, that might be in other states, there are family caregiver support pro programs throughout the country. So I just wanna let you know that. Um, they're usually offered within the area agency on aging. Um, sometimes those are across several counties. Um, so if you need information about those other ones, let me know and I can pass that along um, if you have people in other states. So, um, so through our program, we basically do a lot of um, information and assistance, referrals, um, a lot of just talking with families, caregivers about options, um, whether it be in-home care, adult day care. Um, we talk about assisted livings and nursing homes and um, a lot of people we work with don't have a lot of funding to help pay for um, options. So um, it's challenging at times, but we try to give people different ideas or sometimes it's piecemealing things together um, or encouraging them to, you know, obviously get a break for themselves and, and try to work out how they can, you know, maybe um, use some in-home care or some adult day care or um, short-term help from family. So, so we do um, try to talk to families about options. Um, we work very closely with our other staff, uh, the Maryland Access Point. I'm sure a lot of you know Joy. Um, she's kind of like the front line for all the calls that come in and uh, sometimes and, and a lot of times we're all working with the same people so we're um, very close coordinating with them and making sure families are connected to services so um, we also have a monthly support group it has gone virtual um, like pretty much everything else <laughs> As you all know, I'm sure things are not the same virtually as they are in person. Um, we miss that connection with people, um, but we're, we're doing it virtually. Um, hopefully it will go back in person. I don't have a time frame of when that might happen, but um, we do meet monthly. It's um, the last Wednesday of the month from 1.30 to 2.30. 
um, in the afternoon. And um, if you have people interested in that, let me know. We can add them to our email list to um, give them updates about that and give them the information to connect to the, to the group. Um, we also have um, some trainings that we've been doing. Um, we've started doing like a monthly training at the virtual senior centers um, on different topics. Um, I know Mary did one on uh, emotional reactions to nursing home placement. Um, we have sandwich generation we've done, um, power of music with music and memory, um, long distance caregiving. So, so we've done different things through the senior center. Um, we also have been trained with um, to be certified in the Dementia Live program, which is a uh, simulation of what it might be like to have memory loss. Um, so we, um, again, that has been in person in the past. We had to take it virtual. It's definitely not the same, um, but it's been modified. And I think it still gives a, a good insight into what people might be experiencing when they have some memory loss. So, um, so we're doing that virtual. Um, there's one coming up August 18th. Um, it's through the Virtual Senior Center and it's from 10 to 11 a.m. So if you or anyone you know might be interested in participating in that, um, you know, let us know and I can get to the info to connect them to that. Um, we also have been doing a six week program. It's called Powerful Tools for Caregivers. It's an evidence-based um, educational program where it's really focusing on care for the caregiver. And we talk a lot about communication strategies, um, a lot of tips for self-care, um, very specific working on action plans and small things they can do to take time for themselves um, while they're caring for someone else. So it is a six week class. We've done, I think three virtually. Um, again, these were in person before. Um, usually about 14 people were, were attending in person. Um, we had to cut it down for the virtual one because it's again, harder to connect um, with people virtually. So um, we have another session of that one starting um, Thursday, August 26th, and it'll run through September 30th. And it's from one to 3 p.m. We already have, um, I think four people signed up. So if you know of any others, we probably can do about four more. Um, it is a limited smaller group so we can kind of connect with people um, better that way. So let's see what else. Oh, I know, <laughs> sorry. Um, the biggest thing that, that is a huge help to a lot of people are our respite subsidies. When we first started the program, they were at, I think $250. Then we were able to increase it to $350. And then just recently, we were able to offer $700 stipends. So these are respite subsidies that families can apply for to basically get reimbursed for in-home care, adult daycare, maybe a short stay at a facility, um, care provided by a private person, whether it be family or uh, another relative or neighbor, um, friend. Uh, so there are applications for those. The requirements are the person has to be at least 60, live in Frederick County, the caregiver can live anywhere. Um, they have to need assistance with activities of daily living. And there's an application, we have those. Um, I can certainly share them with you if you'd like. Um, if the person has a memory loss and they are not 60 yet, that's okay. They can apply as well. Um, uh, so basically it's reimbursement once a year up to $700 as we have funding available. Funding's available first come first serve. We're not looking at income. Um, 
I think that's all I need to say about that. If you have questions, we can we can talk about that at the end. Um, music and memory. We have a music and memory program, which is kind of evolving, I would say. Um, Mary and I got certified in that program where we would help um, set up iPods and personalized playlists for families. And we were working with the ombudsman program at our office, um, Mia Brest, I'm sure you all know her. Um, she um, was connecting us with facilities um, to help people who were having some memory you know, issues, challenging behaviors. Um, we were connecting with families to get them some uh, personalized playlists of music because I'm sure a lot of you know how much music can affect people's um, behavior. So, um, so we still do that. Um, or if people don't want to use iPods anymore, we can help them connect with making a playlist through, you know, some other way like Spotify or um, Amazon Music, something like that. So, um, and as people are, as the, the demographics are changing, you know, people are more tech savvy these days. So, um, you know, before we were helping people that were a lot older and weren't used to technology. So um, things are obviously changing. So, and there's more and more people that are used to technology and they have family that can help them connect that way. So um, our memory cafe, we haven't met in a long time <laughs> and I miss that. Um, that has been a partnership from, gosh, it's been several years. Um, it was a great partnership and all of you uh, organizations affiliated with Elder Services has been um, wonderful partners because we would do a lunch, we would have an activity and um, it was just a great time. We would meet at the Frederick Senior Center. It was for families. So it was like the caregiver and the person they care for would both come and um, it was a great time. I don't know when that'll be starting again. Um, maybe next year, I'm hopeful. Um, they're in the process of, of planning the re reopening of the senior centers. Um, they're saying September, um, some limited reopening. Uh, currently all the county buildings are still closed to the public. So um, some of us in our division have started to go back. Um, we're kind of like in groups going back a few at a time, a few on different days. So, um, so I don't have a time frame for when the senior centers are going to be, you know, fully back like they were. And I don't know that if, if, and when they will be like they were. So it may be a limited um, opening process. So our memory cafe was great. Um, and we hope that we can get back to that soon. Uh, Mary and I have also been involved a lot of times with the Alzheimer's Association and a lot of their programs and they're a great partner for us and we appreciate that so much. Um, the Alzheimer's Community Forum we've been involved with. Um, I know Mary's involved with you all with the Compass for Caregivers program and I think that's been an awesome program and we share that information all the time with families. So. Um, I did ask Mary um, if she had anything she wanted me to share and she wanted me to share with you. We also have been involved with um, something called the Dementia Friendly Frederick Initiative. Um, we recently just started meeting again. So I will just share with you what she passed along to me. Um, senior Services, Division continues to work on the Dementia Friendly Frederick Initiative. For those of you not familiar, in May 2018, a dedicated group of community partners set in motion a plan for Frederick to become a dementia friendly community. And since then, um, has been granted membership in the Dementia Friendly America Network. Dementia Friendly Frederick is committed to raising awareness within the Frederick County community about dementia with the collective goal um, to elevate the quality of life for those living with dementia and their caregivers 
by using a sector by using a sector by sector approach throughout the county. Efforts were paused during COVID, but meetings resumed last month and we're eager to move forward. Um, so that's exciting to be able to start that again. Um, when she mentioned sector by sector, um, it is being broken down into government um, businesses and first responders. So Mary and I were involved before COVID um, in training the fire and rescue um, personnel and volunteers. We hadn't done volunteers yet, but we, that was on the plan um, to share with them the Dementia Live program so they could be more um, dementia friendly. <laughs> um, so I think that's all I have to share with you. Um, I appreciate you guys listening. I know you probably have questions, so I'll do my best to answer them. I don't know that I'll have an answer, but I'll do my best. So thanks. So this, this is Troy. My first question is, um, it's amazing what just the two of you are accomplishing <laughs> here. That's quite a list. But with that, is there a website or is there place mm -hmm. you know all of us can go to to actually find all these great programs and kind of advertise and get the word out sure um so mary usually sends a monthly email and i know a lot of you are probably on it if you're not just um if you want to shoot me an email or you can check out our web page and it's the frederickcountymd.gov um and I think they changed it to senior services, but let me, hold on and I'll look it up for you. Um, yeah, when you find it, if you can put it in the chat, that would be great. Absolutely, yeah. So on there, we have a caregiver support page, and then there's all the other information about the other programs through our division. Um, the virtual senior center information is there. Um, and they've done amazing things. I have to say, you know, the senior centers were all in person. They, they switched over to all this virtual programming and they have done really amazing things. So um, if you have people that are tech savvy and interested in doing things online, it's a wonderful resource. They have all kinds of things going on. One-time programs, uh, exercise programs, things that are ongoing too. So it's um, uh, just various, various things going on there. Um, but on our webpage, we have um, uh, specific to our program and everything kind of broken down that I just explained to you. Um, what else? Melinda, can you put your email in the uh, chat box? Because I would like to be on that mailing list. Okay, that's exactly. Yep. I the, did put it in there. I think it's at the top. It. At the top. Okay. Because uh, those are exactly the type of things the aging in place Facebook page that we have. Yes, I and mean, I'm on there. <laughs> I, I I just looked <laughs> to make sure you were. But, I um, see all that programs, great stuff. <laughs> yeah, those programs are exactly the type of stuff we want to highlight for mm, any sure. caregivers on the page. So I'd absolutely. Love to know. Oh, Mandy? Yes. Um, I just want to check in with you. First, I have Hi, to see you again. <laughs> um, just how long about is the application process from start to actually getting the funds for or getting approval for a respite stay? So the respite funding, Mary and I do those. Um, it's usually only a couple of days for us to, to look over it and process it. And then it goes into this other it goes into other people that look at it and then it goes into the county treasury office because the check actually gets cut back to um, the care recipient. So we tell people it's about three weeks. Um, we tell them if they haven't received it in like a month to let us know. I haven't had any problems except there was one maybe six months ago because there was a mail issue. Um, so we had to reissue a check, but I say a month maximum, but it's usually really like maybe two to three weeks. Okay. But um, for approval, because they could get approval, how long? Yes, that's a couple of days. Couple of days, but, okay, perfect, thank you. Yes. So 
uh, same subject here, but the question is, what's your budget season? So what's eligibility? How many times can you ask for it? For the respite? Mm-hmm. Uh, so are you, as, a, as like per budget season, you're allowed one application for the $700 no. grant? Absolutely, yes. And the because it's a federally funded program, it is October 1st through September 30th. So we're getting ready to get to the end of our year. As far as I know, we still have funds. Um, we're still approving them. And um, if you have any families that are interested in that, you know, let us know. The application we've modified over the years. We've tried to make it as easy as possible. People get scared by the W-9 they have to fill out, but that's required by the county because they have to put them in the system as a vendor. Vendor, um, But it's the way it has to be done, so we can't do it any other way because we've tried. We've asked, Mary and I have asked, and it just is the way it has to be, so. Does that help? Is there a process like how can we refer people? Um, uh, can do we just let you know? Like if I have somebody who uh, calls for services but really can't afford it, is this something I should tell them about? And what's the process for them to get started to get some help? So, so you can definitely um, probably start by referring them to the Maryland Access Point. Okay. However, we a lot of times overlap with our people. I mean, all the time. So, you know, if Joy starts with them, she'll refer them to us. Or if we start with them, we refer them to her. So, I mean, you can definitely give Mary and I's contact info. You know, the 301-600-6001 is our office number. Um, when we're working remotely, we check that, you know, Mm -hmm. all the time <laughs> okay and then we have to call people back from these cell phone numbers which we found people aren't answering or we're leaving messages and then they're not calling us back so that's been kind of an issue but um, we just try to call a couple of times so so definitely share people you know share our phone number share joy's number our our direct number the 301 600 1234 they can always start there that's our um kind of administrative assistance start there and then they send them out to where they think they should go um in terms of the uh people that are having trouble um, affording mm -hmm. home care. I mean, we do caution people that this is only a little bit of help. Um, yeah. So it's not ongoing and it's not, you know, um, you know, a huge amount of help. Although I do have to say, I'm glad we were able to offer this amount instead of the, the smaller amount that we used to do. But mm -hmm. again, that was because we had increased funding in the caregiver program. So so hopefully, I mean, we never know um, if that funding will increase. Um, obviously, with the population, everybody's a caregiver at some point, um, yeah. it seems. And um, hopefully, you know, one of our program has been one of the programs that has been increased when other things have been cut. So hopefully going forward, it will continue. Um, but we just don't know. So um, does that help? Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank okay. you, Mary. Yeah, no problem. I'm sorry, I'm trying to still get our website. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm talking. Any well, other we appreciate, well, we appreciate that every little bit helps because I know many of us who are providing yes. care for seniors. Sometimes you get in those situations where you're just like, where else? I mean, you're trying all different programs and grants out there. And all of a sudden you get to the point where it's like, I don't know where else to turn them to. And of course we all feel so empathetic. I wish we could do more, but uh, right. it, you know, that, that hurts. It hurts Absolutely. all of us. Yes, yes. And sometimes there aren't any, I mean, sometimes it's so hard because there's no good answer. There's no great answer. Um, again, like I said earlier, it's a lot of times piecemealing things together. Um, and you know, some, some caregivers that can't do, I mean, they can't do that. Like they're the one person caring for this 
parents and they are so saturated, they can't try to put together some kind of piecemeal arrangement for, for help. Um, so, so do just, you have any insight when like it would raise again to like an eight or $900 or is it pretty much you're just, hey, this is what it is for the budget? Yeah, this is it now. This is it for okay. now. Yeah. If now that get, $700 <laughs> does help. It does help bridge the gap at times. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Are there questions, Melinda? folks? I have a question. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Melinda. Eileen's absolutely right. You, you and Mary are the dynamic duo and with oh. Joy, the dynamic trio. I mean, the, the oh, whole, thanks. your whole group just does so much to help our seniors. Thank um, you. Yeah, so uh, you're welcome. There in other counties, Baltimore, Carroll, Washington, Howard, mm -hmm. there is the group home subsidy program. I don't right. know if you're familiar with that or if this is even yes. your AOR, but is there talk of either of having that happen in Frederick County? Not sure where the funding comes from, but. Yeah, um, I haven't heard anything about it lately. Um, it was something that had been talked about in the past. I think um, Mia Brust would be the person to ask. She's the ombudsman or possibly Carolyn. Um, I can try to get an answer for you about where that is and maybe follow up with um, the elder services email. Would that work? Sure, that'd be great. And I can contact Mia too. I mean, I just, okay. I was just curious because yeah, <laughs> and I don't, it's such a helpful program I in know. those other counties. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know all the background of that. I just know that it wasn't, wasn't happening for us. Um, yeah. and I don't know why. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. I'll ask Mia and I'll see if I can get some info and pass it along to Troy with, um, to share with all of you. Fabulous. Thanks. Sure. It's Doug Brown. I have a question for you. Um, you had talked about the dementia live program with uh, fire and rescue. Can you talk a little more about that, how you're implementing that? Um, I work sure. really with Matt and I used to work in Frederick County fire and rescue and I have like 40 years off and on in the fire service. So awesome. Very interested in how that looks. Okay. So it started back before everything closed. Um, we were doing Oh, Mary and I, um, it was like all we did probably for several months. I mean, we obviously did our other, the rest of our job too, but we were pretty busy and crazy, like running around to different firehouses <laughs> and we were offering trainings um, to them. And I'm sure, you know, their training schedule is pretty busy and we would go to, depending on the day, we, we would be at a different firehouse and there would be, um, you know, 20 to 30 people um, that we would do the dementia live training. So it is basically um, a simulation um, where they get geared up um, to um, have their senses affected basically um and then they're asked to do tasks so so and we would also give them background about dementia um just educating them um about dementia and how it's not just for older people there are younger people that have it and and it's not always noticeable i mean you know they're 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 on an emergency it's quick it's you know, they don't have a lot of time to assess assess if somebody has memory loss, but we were more of just trying to raise awareness. So it's kind of on their radar. Um, so we would do the simulation piece, which I think is really helpful um, because it's putting you in the shoes of what it could be like to have memory loss. So um, I think those individuals really benefited from the simulation. Um, it was interesting and fun because they were a whole different group of people that we, you know, don't usually work with. 
Um, you know, we've done the simulation with families and for families, it's can be very emotional and raw um, and challenging for, you know, their, you know, seeing what their family member might be experiencing. Um, so we try to make it like, you know, quick and giving them tips to, to know what to, to kind of look for. And, and then resources of, you know, the Alzheimer's Association is an option for information and training, you know, at least so they could direct families if they notice, or if the loved one says, hey, I can't leave, I have this person with dementia here. Um, you know, if they're having a medical issue and the person's there that they're caring for. Um, so things like that. Um, does that help you? Does that answer your question? Actually, what it did was turned on a switch in my brain. I would love to follow up with this a little further. There's a okay. research opportunity in here for that. Great. Uh, and so great. I will reach out, or if you don't hear from okay. me, because me, like you, we're all crazy busy. Yes. Um, you said before COVID, I think that's a whole new meaning to the phrase or the initial yes. DC, right? Before COVID. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I would love to follow up on this sure. uh, in detail. Sure. Yeah, we're, um, I want to say it was December of 2019 when we finished what we could do. Um, I want to say it was like 400 people that we trained. So we were pretty, it was pretty crazy. Um, and uh, we're hopefully in talks to get going again um, because they've had some recruit crap classes that came through that um, since then. So, so we'll see. And I know Mary's been looking at possibly um, training with um, the police. They've, they've talked with them before, again, before COVID. I feel like everything's like before or after, before or after. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, but again, it's just more about raising awareness, you know, trying to just have people understand that, you know, they might look like they're intoxicated, but they're not, or it might be something else like their, their memory or, you know, um, and then the whole issue of wandering. So again, McGean's very involved with, um, the dementia friendly Frederick, um, initiative. So, they're great partners for us. So um, yeah, I'll look forward to hearing from you, Doug. You can email me. Thanks. I'm gonna do that right now. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Um, I had a quick question, just kind of yeah. to follow up on what um, Doug was just asking about. Have in reference to that event, you know, where you train, I guess you're speaking mainly of training the, um, you know, fire, firefighters and everything. I had signed up, this is probably 2019, you know, to go to one of those trainings and wasn't able mm -hmm. to make it. And okay. I just wondered, have you guys thought at all about either maybe doing a virtual um, training and or a hybrid? Because even though we would love to have it in person and right. so many things are kind of shifting to right. either virtual or hybrid, just wondered if you, had thought about you know doing that because there might be somebody that I can pass some information mm -hmm. on to you about that actually does a lot of things like that and I think she would be a great resource for you guys to connect with. Awesome yes we have been doing it virtual um, it's not the same when we've reached out to the fire and rescue recently they still want to do it in person so we and we think it's better in person um, there is a virtual option and we have been offering that um, through the Virtual Senior Center. There is one coming up on August 18th um, through the Virtual Senior Center and it's from 10 to 11 a.m. Um, is that something that anybody can mm -hmm. uh, go yes. on? Where yes. would we find that? You would go to the, um, I'm here, I'm finally getting this, hold on. I'm gonna put the website in here and then I'm gonna put the virtual senior center in there as well. 
So I put our website and then this is the copy. So the next link I just put in there is the um, senior center. And then within that on the left, there's a virtual senior center. So I'm gonna put that link in there too. I'm again. Okay. Any other questions for Mindy? The last link I would just put in there is the virtual senior center. Um, if you have questions about that dementia live, you can email them. It all has to be done through them, like signing up through them for that program. Cool. Um, but yeah, it's the 18th at, a, at 10 and it'll be an hour. It'll be a quick hour um, because we, we had to cut it down. So yeah. Okay. So thank you all for having me and listening and uh, I hope it was helpful, um, but I appreciate all of you and what you do. And uh, you know, we just keep plugging away, <laughs> right? As the awesome. thank more, you. And more and more and more and more people just keep coming. So. So thank you for all you do. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Sure. So I'm gonna put two people in the spot real quick because I know they have a big event coming up in October, but Julie or Megan, can you talk about the Alzheimer's walk? Thank you so much for doing that, Troy. I appreciate it. Yeah, so our walk is happening Sunday, October 10th, my birthday. Um, and I know they did that just for me. And it's um, gates will open at 11. And we're really, really stressing this year, asking people to get registered in advance. I don't know if you recall, but we usually have a big line for people to register in person um, and drop off cash donations or check donations that day. But we're really emphasizing to get that done in advance so that we can um, pare down on handling of items and passing stuff back and forth. We're really removing as much as we can of touch, you know, that shared touch situation. We're gonna have hand sanitizers everywhere. We're gonna do our best to socially distance people. Our food options will be changed this year. We're doing away with some of our fun zones, but um, we're looking forward to a great event. It's at the stadium again. WFRE is gonna do a live stream. So they're gonna do a live broadcast from the walk uh, event site. And that's exciting. That's the first time we've tried that. Uh, Tom Whalen supporting us as usual. Uh, I don't know if, if those of you who know Tom Whalen or know of him as the DJ for WFRE, he lost his identical twin brother to younger onset dementia. And so he's got a very close and personal connection to the story. And he is a wonderful um, partner of ours. And we're very grateful for him and for WFRE. Um, Still have, I just checked my sponsorship uh, totals and I would love to have another sponsor or two to get me to my finish line. And we're always, always, always in need of teams to get registered. So if you haven't yet, I know some of you have participated. I'd love to have you return again with us this year. We are opening up the option for those communities and other uh, organizations or even family and friends who want to walk wherever they are, they can still do that. And we've upgraded our mobile app, the Walk to End Alzheimer's mobile app, to be more interactive this year and help you have fun while you do that at a distance. Some people just will not be comfortable gathering in a crowd. So we understand that and we're doing things to support that approach as well. I did put the link to the website for registration in the chat. So grab that and also email me or call me um, to talk about any other things or if I can help your team get off and walking, so to speak. Thanks so much, Troy, I appreciate it. No, thank you. So my, my next question is for the gang here. So I know about a couple months ago here, um, Christina put out there if we were interested in doing a 
in-person slash hybrid meeting next month. And I just want to get a pause again from everybody. If you can raise your hands, if you really would like to do an in-person one, uh, so we can start pursuing something like this. Uh, Chris, PW, Eileen, Julie, I think we got a good consensus. So yeah. uh, I'll, I'll get together with the gang here, the board of directors and stuff like that. And um, I know we have some folks who are volunteering some potential spaces we could utilize here. So we will reach out to them. Um, I think it would be good to see folks. Now, would you also like in the September, October timeframe to maybe do a social gathering? I know it's kind of getting back out there again. And is that a good thing too? If it is, does people want to raise their hand if they want to yeah. get together after work? Okay. All right. Everybody wants to get back together. That's good. And like we, that. could, we could make that outside too. Good point. All right, and for got some that, of us got that. Seen during COVID, that would not be to get together again. It would be to get together for the first time. There you go. All right. So, um, Angela, do you think we have time to do the finances, or do you think we should move that to the next session here? Um, I think we. I can tell you what what we've got. So, actually, All our right. um, uh, our fiscal year closed closed on July 31st and our bookkeeper sent a report for uh, through, the, through that date. So as of uh, July 31st, our balance sheet shows that we are worth $34,607.05. Um, the, the month of July, she, uh, she gave a year to date comparison with July. And it's pretty simple. I mean, we had expenses in July totaling about $732. Uh, we didn't have any income in July. Uh, I do have to check through my emails because I think I may have seen something pop up that somebody has um, uh, sent a membership donation, but I'm not positive. So I need to go through, you know, those I many- I did just emails. see a pop up. I yeah. saw a pop but I didn't see who it was, but I will track that down. And uh, so we should have a little bit of money to, to offset that. But basically we're doing okay. You know, there's not a lot of income coming in right now and the expenses are pretty regular. There's the regular bookkeeping, which is $60. And then the cost of paying for Zoom and uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, supplies like that. Our web hosting fees were $400 and that's annual. So that just came up. So uh, we won't need to worry about that for another year. So it gives kind of a false view of the amount of expenses. Normally expenses would be in that like $300 a month range. So I think we're doing okay. Yeah, when I, when I looked at it, when you sent me the report the other day, we've been actually pretty frugal since yes. we have not held the Auditor Expo. So I've been very mm -hmm. happy with the team. That's great. Yeah. All right, we got a few minutes left. Uh, anything else anybody wants to bring to anybody's attention? Um, I would like to invite everybody to come to our happy hour. I'm just getting invitations printed, so I'm hoping to get invitations out to everybody and I'll get it on social media as well. Uh, but we are holding a happy hour here at Shepherd Staff in Home Care on Thursday, September 9, from 4 to 6 p.m., so end of the day. We're gonna have beer and wine. We're going to feature a, uh, a craft beer truck called Old Charm uh, that is available for events and weddings. It's actually owned by my son-in-law. So I'm very proud of him and he's uh, gonna be <laughs> coming out to, to pour beer and wine for us. And you can admire his uh, 1954 um, Chevy pickup truck. I think it's a Chevy. Oh, it's cool. either a Chevy or a Ford. I can't say for sure now. I'm gonna to have, to, to have to take a close look next time I'm I'm out there. But anyway, uh, we're going to have fun and uh, we're going to have gifts for everybody who comes. So I hope you'll come help us celebrate our 10 year anniversary. And, um, you know, uh, just y'all come. I'm looking forward to it and I'm hoping we get a big crowd. We're going to have food and, and goodies and, um, and, and we would, you know, welcome everyone to come. It'll be in our parking lot. I'll Have be there. Week. Great. That's cool. Okay. I just wanted to give a shout out to Pam at Spring Arbor, um, although she's in her office still. Um, I had met with a family a few weeks ago who were um, struggling with 
mom had just moved in with them. She has severe dementia and her husband died suddenly. So they had me out to really talk through all their options and everything. And she ended up looking at seven facilities and chose Spring Arbor. So I just wanted to say she was a tough customer. So I just wanted to say, good job, Pam. Yeah, thank you. And very happy. She loved thank it. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah. She knew and it was great. great. Yeah. So she was, she's very, very happy. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Sure. Thank you. Any other shout outs? I love that. I just have to welcome um, Stephen Luber, who has um, joined our Right at Home Washington County group. So he's not a new face to most of you. We stole him. I mean, we got him from Stress Free Solutions. Um, and we're just so happy to have Stephen out in the community. So, Stephen, welcome to Right at Home. Uh, thank you, Eileen. And um, good to see a lot of familiar faces. Um, I'm excited to reconnect with a lot of people back in the marketing role here. So uh, please reach out to me. I'd love to connect with a lot of you. And I know there's a lot of catching up to do. I look forward to it. Thanks. I have one Anybody question. Else? Any, any uh, pool sharks in the group? I've got a, I've <laughs> I know got where you're going a, with that. <laughs> huh? I know where you're going with that. <laughs> there's a pool no, tournament please. coming up uh, on Saturday, the 21st. It's being held at the, I believe it's the Moose Lodge. I could send you information. Just thought I'd ask. Or car show enthusiasts. There's a car show that day as well at Rose Hill Manor. Both are going to benefit the Alzheimer's Association. So <laughs> awesome. I'll <laughs> probably pick. <laughs> or your classic cars. I wish I was a pool shark. I played pool during, during vacation. We had a pool table and it was embarrassing here. And a beer or two did not help the game. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I missed this because I had to run out real quick. But as far as in person meetings, um, we're willing to do that on our courtyard and that sort of thing. But even so, now with Delta variant, I'm not sure about August. <laughs> yes, we have because we're changing. Obviously, things are changing fast, but we would um, love to do it. Pam, are there uh, any? Okay, willing. Are are there any updates in your protocols? Because we, we've seen the whole spectrum of changes for the facilities. What are you all doing now? Well, corporate was just here actually the last two days going through some of that as well. Um, so right now for visitors, for well, tours, we can do max up to two people. And then for um, visitors for residents, it's in, in apartment, in, in room visits only maximum of two people. So we're trying to keep folks out of the common areas and hallways and hanging out just to minimize that traffic. But that's where we are today. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're, we're, we're clear and good, but we all know how fast some of that can change. But right. yeah. <laughs> all the residents are vaccinated. That's good. 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 Oh, nice. all, all of them. Yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you. We're working on all the staff too. <laughs> I see that, I don't know, there could be a mandate coming very soon. Yeah. I think we are about 68% of staff, but we want, we need to be at a hundred. Yeah. It's a challenge. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I have a question. All right, folks. We are at the, yeah, go ahead. One more thing. I don't know if any of you are aware, but Frederick County Fire and Rescue lost a firefighter yesterday. Yeah. He was killed in a fire. So please, if you have the opportunity, reach out and, and thank everybody for their service and let them know that we're thinking about them. My neighbor actually was that guy's supervisor. So he's really having yeah. a struggle. Yeah. One of my caregivers was a firefighter not fighting that fire. And so she was, she was on that team and um, you know, we're giving her time off to, uh, you know, for compassion. Yeah, that's great. But yeah, it's really, uh, really awful. So our hearts go out to that whole whole community up there because I know it's a tight-knit community but that that's my uh, shout out thank you Doug thank you everybody we're at the top of the hour so we will conclude and we will keep touch as to where and how we will meet the next time around here so everybody have a great August and enjoy your day we'll talk to you soon thanks okay, bye, everyone folks.